What a time. What a season. What a move of God. You know, God's moving. You know, not to anywhere. He's moving. I mean, he's not leaving us. He's moving. Amen? For some people, he may be leaving, but for us, he's moving. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Genesis chapter 2. Everybody there? Oh, good. Then we can speak it together. In verse 15, and the Lord took the man. Okay, is anybody there? Praise God. And the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat or access. Everyone say access. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat or what? Access. So he's saying, look, do, do not access this. For in the day that you eat of it or you access it, you're going to die. Hello. You will surely die die. So he was given us, he says, look at, you can access everything that pertains to life. Amen? But I don't want you to access the things that pertain to death. So if he says, he, I, I, want, I want you to access everything that pertains to life. In other words, you have the right to access. Everyone say right to access. That's called the Bill of Rights. Amen? So you have an eternal bill of rights. You have a right to access as you are born again in the spirit. You have the, thing, the right to access things. You have the right to access, God says, the benefits, his promises. We have a right to access. Is everybody okay? Genesis 3.21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. Oh, wrong one. Hallelujah. So we know that Adam and Eve rejected the counsel of the Lord. Amen? And they partook the access of the tree. They were told, listen, man, if you partake of this, you're going to die. Now, they physically didn't die, but now they had death that was going to proceed. They were actually now denied access to the tree of life. Amen? So the, the right for them to have access was now denied. There was, they lo no longer had a right to it. And in this, he says, in verse 21, So also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he was no longer to take care of the garden. He was removed from that presence. So he drove out the man and he placed a cherubim at the east end of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the tree of life. So understand that that bill of rights was now nullified. It was nullified. They no longer had a right to the things of God. Does everybody understand? No longer did they have a right to them. Only whatever God allowed them to to have was now released. Why? Because there was a price to pay now for every access. The Bill of Rights was now nullified. That's why Jesus had to come. Why did he come? To restore the Bill of Rights. The right for me and you to access. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. 
Why? What happened? Well, disobedience causes a loss of access to the things pertaining to life, life eternal. The right to access was now denied. They lost the rights. Why? Because they ate a deceptive food, didn't they? That deception, they, that when a person gets deceived, God begins to nullify or relinquish the right to access. See, many people don't even know that they don't have, they're, they're trying to access things that they have no right to anymore. That's why there's areas where some people have access to a lot of things and some people don't. Because trust is what? Earned. Trust is earned. And John 14. Restoring your rights. That's what we're talking about today. Restoring your rights. Restoring your rights. John 14. In verse 1, we had a powerful, powerful discussion in our discipleship house about restoring rights. You know, when you become a convicted felon, you lose your rights. But there are areas where your rights begin to get restored. I can now vote now. I'm still waiting for other rights to be restored. Even though I'm a new creation in Christ, the world hasn't accepted that. <laughs> but it's, I'd rather have access to all the things that pertain to life eternally than all the things that pertain to this life. Amen? But see, many people have been denied access to the things that pertain to life eternally because of disobedience. So they only have access to certain things where others have access to more. In verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas, of course, said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes or no one has access to the Father except for what? Through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip, of course, said, wait a minute here, Lord. Show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long? And yet you've not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? So Jesus was saying, listen, I've come to restore your right to access. But there, nobody has any right to access to the Father except for through him. Through the price that he paid. Through the blood of Christ. Amen? He says, I am the restorer of your rights to access. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, that is the tabernacle. Everything revolves around the tabernacle. So you have the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. Is everybody all right? So the tabernacle, it's the tabernacle of relationship of God. He said you have now a free, you have the, the right to access and have fellowship with the Father. Guided by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. That access. Go to verse 26. But the helper, he says, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will what? Teach you all things. In other words, he will teach you how to access. And bring to remembrance all things that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, 
For the rule of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandments, so I do. Arise and let us go from here. So we see that the Holy Spirit will teach how to access by restoring the rights to access. Does everybody understand that? Now, I want you to grab hold of something because here, here's a powerful example. You got Saul, amen? Saul who became Paul. Saul was a man bound by the letter. In fact, that tells us because he had letters from the chief rulers that he may access and take out people who were of the way, arrest them and so forth. He had letters of access. Does everybody understand? The Bible says that the letter kills and the spirit brings what? Life. Now, the outer court is letter. The holy, play, the holy place is spirit. That's where freedom is. The letter kills and the spirit brings life. So you and I are now living in the holy place and most holy place. Where we're not led by the letter. We're led by the spirit. It's different. Amen? See, so what happens in this, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So Saul, who was bound by the letter, once he got baptized and filled with the Spirit of God, and the scales came off, was now led by the Spirit, no longer by the letter. But he brought another letter in. Amen? That was by the Spirit of God. See, because in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came upon people when God dis dis chose whoever. In the New Testament, the Spirit lives in a person. That's totally different. So we are to be led by the Spirit, not by the letter. Thank God for the Bible. But you know, without the Spirit, the letter will not be understood. Then the, without it being understood, the letter becomes bondage. Because it says it kills. That's why it's so important for me and you to fellowship, to worship, to get in God's presence. Amen. Look, at they went from house to house. They broke bread every day. They were in fellowship all the time. They went to the synagogues. They worshipped. There was always fellowship. Why? Because they knew that two or more gathered together, they could overcome. Amen? And it's the presence of God that brings that relationship. Why? That is the holy place and the most holy place. So the enemy tries to come pe get people out of the holy place and most holy place and put them in the place of outer courts so they're bound by the letter, but yet they can't interpret it again. They've lost a true interpretation of it. Because it's the Spirit that wrote this now, not by a man. You cannot understand or comprehend this with the carnal mind. And once the enemy begins to infiltrate, he begins to nullify the mind of the Spirit and begins to activate more the mind of the carnal. So now the carnal mind is going, oh, this, this, and that. Now people are living out of the letter instead of the Spirit. Now, this is where there's bondage. It's not freedom anymore. Not freedom. Amen? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now we see this happening all over the world. We see religions rising up from all kinds of... I mean, look at the doctrines. The Word says that many will fall from the faith of doctrines of demons. Amen? We see doctrines of demons and deceiving spirits coming up with all kinds of rules, regulations, laws, even religious things, trying to put people into bondage and not free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Not where the letter is. Only where the Spirit is. Listen, you and I could have never read the Bible and still be free. Why? Because the Spirit that's in you. If you're led by the Spirit, you're a son of God. Amen? Look at the... They didn't have a Bible then, did they? When Saul became Paul with a new name, he was led by the Spirit. He was filled with the Spirit. And what did he do? They got recording now of his letters. From the Spirit of God, so that you and I can learn the ways of the Spirit of God, not by just what's written. Remember, in the Old Testament, it was a law. They couldn't even fulfill the law. It was just exposed their disobedience. That's all it was. But now there's accountability because the Lord said, I will put my Spirit in you and cause you, and I'll put my laws in your mind and in your heart, and I will cause you to follow my ways if you're led by my Spirit, not by the letter. By the Spirit, not by the letter. Listen, I know people that can study the Word of God all day long. 
and they're still heathens. They can quote the word and still not be led by the Spirit of God. Because there must be a contact. There must be a connection. You must be able to cross over to connect. If you're not crossing over to connect, you're bound by the letter. And we see that all over the world. He warned us that they would come with itching ears. He warned us over and over and over. Be careful. Be careful. Because there will be wolves in sheep's clothing that will come. They will proclaim to be Christians. And some of them will know that they're deceived and serve darkness. And some of them won't even know it. And the wolf comes to what? Take the sheep out of the flock. That's what the wolf does. And it binds them by the letter instead of being led by the Spirit. The Word says that there's unity in the Spirit, not unity in the letter. Amen? Unity where? In the Spirit. Acts chapter 1. Oh, happy days. When a person breaks covenant with God, their rights are lost. They got to be restored. Amen? Just like when you get convicted and whatever. Now there's a conviction. <laughs> so you don't lose your rights. So you don't get, go that far. Amen? Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Hallelujah. Now Jesus came to restore our rights to access. The eternal bill of rights. In verse 4, let's speak it together. It says what? And being assembled together with them. Being what? Assembled. Being assembled. They were assembled together. Amen? They were being assembled together, and he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had heard, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Jesus was not talking about restoring Israel. He was re talking about restoring their rights in the kingdom of God. And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. What greater witness that we may have because we have access to all the things of eternal life. Does everybody understand that? We have a right to access, but you earn that right. Jesus paid the price for it. Now you and I must pay the price. What is the one, number one price that we pay? Obedience. Obedience. Now it's obedience to his direction. Being assembled together. Again, he wasn't here to restore the kingdom of Israel, but to restore their rights in the kingdom of God. Isaiah 61. What connects us together? There's two things, the blood and the spirit. The blood and the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Isaiah 61. In verse 1. Let's speak it together. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Everyone he's, say, I'm anointed. To preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, and to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, that he may be glorified. The spirit 
of the Lord is to set us free. Only by the Spirit of God. Amen? And to restore our rights to access. That's why he convicts. So every time that you and I are tempted and challenged, one of the things the enemy knows is that if he can get you thrown out of the holy place, it puts you right back into the outer courts. And we know things that separate man from God is sin, rebellion, disobedience. Those things separate, and those things will shut your access to the things of God until we are restored in spirit and in truth. Does everybody get it? Will God trust someone that's deceived? No, he won't. Will he allow that person that's deceived access to the things of him? No. Those things, those, bill, those rights will be shut down. And there will be limitations of access. Remember, Adam and Eve had no access to the tree of life that were shut down. Jesus came to bring back the tree of life. But by the Spirit of God is who leads us now, who guides us, who establishes the right to access through our obedience and submission to the Spirit of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are called what? Sons of God, not by the letter. This is where the spirits of religiosity come in. This is where the spirits of deception, this is where the spirits of pride and self-righteousness, all of these spirits start to come in and promote the separation from fellowship. They promote the separation from the flock. They promote it. Why? Because that's what a wolf does. Amen? That's what a wolf does. And we got to expose these things. We have to be careful of these things. You have to be careful not to associate with that kind of doctrine. Amen? We must be careful because that's what's happening. Listen, the devil comes to steal what? Your identity. The identity of Christ is second now, except for the identity of self comes first. The I am right <laughs> syndrome. When there's nobody right, only Jesus. Galatians 5. Oh, happy days. You know, I, I, for me to see what's going on all over the world and how people, it says you know them by their fruit, right? And you can tell the ones that are utilizing the access and the ones that are denied. You can tell in their way of life and what they're doing. It's like being around a dry drunk. Not filled with the Spirit. They're miserable. Or oh, they may not be drinking. They may not be doing the things that they used to do. Amen. But they're stinking miserable. There isn't joy in them, that's for sure. And that's all they're looking for is something to complain about. Why? Because it's now flesh. It's now flesh. And then blame. Oh, the blame and complain. Galatians 5. <laughs> Is everybody there? Verse 1. Let's speak. Stand fast, therefore, in the what? Liberty or freedom by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of what? Bondage or the yoke of religion. The letter. Everyone say letter. The letter kills. Spirit brings life. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that you become circumcised. Christ will profit you nothing. So why? Because that's all about doing the letter. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, the freedom and the anointing. You attempt to be justified by yourself or by the law that you do. You have fallen from grace. You are now bound by the letter, not by the Spirit. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of what? Righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. You ran well. What happened to you? 
How could you start in the spirit and go back to the letter? Who hindered you from obeying the spirit? See, truth also represents spirit. It doesn't represent letter. So many times people think, well, the letter represents truth. Yes, but it's the spirit. It's called the spirit of truth. Who hindered you from following the spirit and brought you back to the letter? Where you're now in bondage, self-righteous, and you are not free. Hallelujah. Verse 8, this persuasion doesn't come from him who calls you. Well, if it didn't come from Jesus, it came from somebody else. A little leaven, leaven means evil. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he or she is. Stand fast in your freedom to access because sin of bondage will deny all your accesses. Amen? Remember, obedience in obeying the truth gives you the right. The right to what? To access. See, salvation, God came with salvation. Salvation is to restore. Amen? In this salvation, those who submit to the plan of salvation called grace, he will reward. Reward is the right to access. Amen? Some have more access than others because trust is earned. We earn that access. Amen? Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Oh, yes. Verse 20. Now we know Saul, amen, who became Paul, God chose. And he said, look at this dude's going to suffer many things for my name, <laughs> my name's sake. But God slammed him filled him with the Holy Spirit, knocked him off his horse. Amen? You know what he did? He made him, humbled him. Saul became humbled. Here he was prideful of all the things he had because he was living by the letter. Man, look at me. I can obey the law. I'm the, you know, I, I'm doing this. I'm doing this for God. I'm doing all of these things for God. Yet God didn't ask him to do it. In fact, he thought he was doing it for God when God said, you're doing it for the devil, not for me. In fact, didn't he call the Pharisees and Sadducees and said, your father is of the devil. I mean, they had all of these scriptures, but they didn't interpret correctly. Some of them did, some of them didn't. Like Ananias and some of them, they did. That's the ones that the Lord revisited and told them to go lay hands on Saul. They were, they were men, righteous men who were seeking God, who could understand and interpret by God, by the Spirit of God, the letter that was written. Because they were not led by the letter. They were waiting for the fulfillment that was written in the letter. It's different. Now that that letter has been fulfilled, amen? It, the word talks about that it's, it's required now that the law has been fulfilled. The letter has been fulfilled by those who are what? Led by the Spirit. Oh, they're not, you are what? Back under the law and in the letter. Is everybody Okay. Verse 20, let's speak it. The Lord did what? He rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. Now, wait a minute. It says, and the Lord is the what? Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So when you see the word Lord there, that's representation of His Spirit. Is everybody Okay. I have kept the ways of the Spirit, the Lord, and have not wickedly departed from my God. Does everybody see the difference? I have kept the ways of, of the Spirit, and I've not 
the, the part of from my God. Amen. And all his judgments were before me. And I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has what? Recompensed me or rewarded me according to the, my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. What did he, he reward him? Access. He was, see, we are, when you and I are born again, we are in a process of getting back our rights. Not everything is restored. Salvation is restored. Amen. Salvation now brings you into a place to access, but access to many things of God is earned. Does everybody get it? It's earned. Rewarded by his righteousness and clean hands. Obedience. He was rewarded. Obedience to, his, to the leading of his spirit. He said, I didn't, I, I didn't forsake the spirit's lead. In Acts 10. Acts chapter 10. In verse 36. Acts 10 verse 36. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all the things which he did both in the land of the Jews and Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on the, cross, on the tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to the witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us, to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin. So that means forgiveness of sin so that you can have what? Access. So your rights could be restored. Verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, what happened? The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. So some of them who didn't hear, the Holy Spirit didn't fall on them. Amen? Only those who heard the word. There were some that were listening but not hearing. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them what? Speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they asked him to stay a few days. So they were all gathered together. The word went out and they all got filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in tongues. Why? Because when we were gathered together as a group, we magnify God in the spirit called tongues. We don't need an interpretation. Amen. That's another part of the tongues, the gift of tongues. But we just magnify God. We magnify and we glorify and we lift his name. And we're all praying. Everybody's praying for one another in here too while we're praying. <laughs> you might not know how to pray, but the Spirit knows how to pray. And you can sense that there's a draw because there's a connection. You're praying something into the, into the corporate. You're praying something in. This is God's storehouse. He has storehouses all over the place. That's why he says, look, bring your tithes and offerings to where? The storehouse is not to your bank accounts. Amen. To the storehouses. We are connected as a storehouse and an outreach 
so that we can feed, clothe, and shelter and rescue those. And everybody partakes of the same rewards. Amen? So in this, without being connected to a storehouse, then we're disconnected. You know, I, I've heard many people, well, I watch t TV evangelism. Well, I'm glad you're watching something anyway. You know. But the Bible says for not, not to forsake assembling. It's important. It's very important. Why? So the wolf don't come and get you out. And that's not a doctrine of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. So he says, man, if, that's why the word says, and if God will so grant them repentance. Why? Because if the Lord grants them the repentance, it's up to the Lord to grant someone repentance. Amen? Listen, after somebody breaks covenant, after somebody, you know, we do something stupid. We know it was wrong. God says, come on, I want to restore you. Because right now I'm going to have to hold back on a couple things. It says, after you fulfill the will of God, the promise is released. That's a reward. Why? Because you fulfill what he asked you to do. Amen? The promise is released. God is trying to act, get, restore all of our rights so that we have access to everything of his, the hidden treasures, the deep things of God. Getting understanding, visitations, revelations. Man, he wants to have so much more than we can't even imagine. But we're, we can become limited on the desires and entanglements and affairs of this world and the selfish needs of self. So many times there's more time promoting self than there is promoting the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6. Glory. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. What's the Lord word Lord mean? Spirit. Be strong in what? The Spirit. And in the power of His might. So if you're not strong in the Spirit, then you're strong in your flesh. Amen? And it's the power of self, not the power of Christ. Put on the whole armor, God, that you may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil. But I want you to go back to the original. It says, be strong in the spirit. Be strong in the spirit. Be connected. Be filled. Be possessed. Be saturated in the spirit. Why? So you don't get tricked. Does everybody get it? So you don't get tricked. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of... You know what? When people don't ask themselves, who told me that? You're in the flesh. Who told me that? Where did that come from? The enemy just brought you back out. There should be always a, a detailed sensitivity and discerning going on all the time. If the, uh, if the divine nature is constantly activated, you know all things. That's what the word says, the anointing that teaches you and you know all things. You know what's going on. You can sense it. Before it even gets near you. There's times you can wake up in the morning and you know. Ooh, snap. Something's going on today. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Power of the Lord, not the power of self. When... We're not strong in the spirit, filled with the spirit enough, it limits the right to access. Why? Because God can't trust someone that's not strong in the spirit. 
They're strong in themselves. Again, they can quote scripture left and right, and they love to tell everybody else what they're doing wrong. <laughs> they need to build mirrors all around them, you know. You need to look in the mirror. Whatever's winking at you, get rid of. And if something's in your mirror that has sunglasses on, you really have a problem. <laughs> Glory to God. Verse 14, let's start there. Therefore, he says what? Awake! You who fell asleep, who've been taken out of the Spirit into the letter, who have been removed from the holy place of the outer court, arise from the dead. And the anointing will give you light. See, am I in the wrong place? <laughs> Sounded good, though, didn't it? I love that. Let's go to Ephesians 5, <laughs> verse 14. <laughs> Whew, sure got hot in here. Therefore, he says, awake you who fell asleep. Fallen from the letter. Fallen to the letter or on the letter. Ephesians 5, verse 14. Oh, did I say 5 or 14? How about 6? Let's try 5. 5. 5, 14. Hello. Would you like to read it with me so we all can do it together, okay? Therefore... He says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as idiots or fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled, be saturated. Why? That means be strong in the Lord. So that you're not strong in your flesh. Now let's go to Ephesians 4. Glory. The Spirit will wake you up, man. Verse 17. Ephesians 4, 17. Can we speak it together? This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, and the fertility of their mind, having their understanding what? Darkened. Now, you got to remember, is this letter written to unbelievers or believers? To his warning them. Look at it, man, be careful. Because you'll go right back into darkness, if you allow it. Being alienated from the life of God. Being alienated from the access of the things that pertain to the life of God. The right to access. Because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their hearts. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work of all uncleanness with greediness. But you've not learned Christ the anointing. If indeed you had heard from him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off this way of living. Concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and what? And holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't what? Sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And don't give place to the what? Devil, because you will lose the right to access. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, if he's the one that's going to guide you to access, he's the one that's 
promotes your rights to access, you don't want to grieve him. Because those rights will be nullified. Access will say, no, not now. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God for whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And now he tells us this is how it's going to stop. Your access will stop by what? All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. People are still holding on forgiveness. Access is denied. Totally denied. See, now when access is denied to individuals, they look for something else for access. The problem is the enemy opens the door to them. Now they're accessing what we call familiar spirits. Now it's about a feeling. Now it's deception. And these familiar spirits will cause division. That's what they love to do. Isaiah 59. We do not want to lose the right to access. How about losing the right to access God's presence? Terrible thing. I've experienced that. You know, in one of my visitations from the Lord, and you've all probably heard the testimony about it when I was in the park and so forth. I was trying to, I was driving a 46 Chrysler Cadillac or Chrysler limousine, and I wanted to sell it to get money. And, uh, and the Lord sent one of his angels and And he knew everything. He knew what exactly what I was thinking and so forth. And uh, I mean, everything I thought he said. He's a big, dark man. But his presence was. Whew. And uh, and he kept telling me, "I have everything you need." And I thought, well, if you got everything I need, why don't you just give me the cash? He said, and I said, how much? He, he, I said, I'm asking $30,000 for the car. He says, I know that, but I have everything you need. Far beyond all of that. I'm thinking, well, well, give me the 30 grand. What's the problem? And he didn't try and, you know, it was like, there was no negotiations. And you, I remember I used, to, I used to call the Holy Spirit buddy. And so this guy's talking to me, and he says, look, at I, I'm going to have to go. And everything that I was thinking, man, he needs tires on his truck. He says, I got to go get tires for my truck. And he says, I'm going to go get lunch. And I said, he's going to go get Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is the thought I had. And he says, I'm going to go get Kentucky Fried Chicken. In other words, he knew every one of my thoughts. Everything I thought of, he spoke. And I'm thinking, what the heck? He says, I have everything you need. I kept thinking, oh, then give it. So then he says, I got to go. And I think, no, wait a minute. Well, let me get your number, I said. Something. I can contact you. So I gave him a, a ripped off something. Now people are coming all around the, on the car, starting to look at the car. I'm getting, I'm getting distracted now. I, please know I'm only two months old in the Lord. All right. So I write, he, he writes down his name and number. I put it in my pocket. Man, he leaves. I got convicted. It was like, whoa. It was like the. The Spirit of the Lord just came off of me and stood a distance and convicted me. I was thinking, Lord, was that you? Eh. I'm thinking, oh, man, no, no. If that was you and I rejected you, I'm, oh, no. Man, I drove home. I ran in the house, grabbed the phone, dialed the phone number, looked at the name, and the name was Buddy. The phone had no connection. And the Spirit of God lifted from me for three days. And the one thing he said to me, Guy, much is given, much is required. What was he coming to bring me that he kept saying, 
I have everything. Access. See, he wasn't talking about the money here. He was telling me, I, uh, I'm giving you access to everything that pertains to life and eternal. And I missed it. And man, let me tell you, I have to say that was part of the worst time of my life. Here I am saved two months, and it was the worst time of my life of being saved. It was terrible. Man, I begged, I cried, where are you? Except for them when the witch came by and gave me something, and that turned everything around. But anyway, it's a whole other story. But he was trying to tell me, I've granted you. I'm restoring your rights to access everything. And I missed it. But I got it afterwards, let me tell you. And I ain't letting that go again. Heck no. I'm accessing everything. Isaiah something, 59, <laughs> verse 1. Let's begin. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated from you, from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you. So that you will not hear. Does everybody get it? See, so it, if we're in a rebellious state, it says it separates us from him. And we can't hear. So a person that's in rebellious state with God ain't hearing God. I'm going to tell you right now. And the access to the things of God have been nullified. Why? Because they can't trust. It says that we are to be led by the Spirit of God, right? So you got to hear Him. For your hands have, are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue has muttered perversity. Separation from full access. That's what happens. 2 Peter 1. Oh, happy days. Restoring your rights, that's what Jesus came to do. Rights, rights to what? Access. Man, and, and after my visitation and so forth, I'd go into prayer in the morning, and, I, and I'd be like a little kid waiting for my mentor, to, my nanny, Holy Spirit buddy, to come and take me and bring me to the places of God. I, I, I would have visions of him, and I was, a, I was like a little boy, him grabbing me, and we go into the throne room of God in this big throne room. He would take me to places, granting me access. One day I was, I was in a vision and I was in a, in a garden. And uh, all of a sudden, I was a little boy. And I was on this wooden bench. And, uh, and the Lord came and he sat next to me. And he began to speak to me in all kinds of things, and I don't remember everything. And next thing I know, this gorgeous, beautiful horse comes walking in. And, 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 and there was a coat rack, and it was a coat rack, but it had like a goldish silver armor on, on the coat rack. And, uh, and after my communion with him, he picked me up and put me on the horse. And I looked and the stuff was off the coat rack. And next thing I know, it was on me as an adult. In other words, when we're with him, we're to be his children. Children. But when we leave that presence, we go out as warriors. See, that access, nobody can compare to. None. None. It's available for everyone. Everyone. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter something. One, verse two. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to what? 
life. How are you going to get it? Access. And godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great precious promises, that through these you may what? Partake. Partake means what? Access. Of the divine nature. And having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For these things are yours and abound. You will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he who lacks these is short-sighted and even to blindness and has forgotten he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For a, an, an, a, what? an access or entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Awesome. What's he saying? You have access to, to activate this divine nature. Remember, divine nature overcomes everything. Amen. Psalm 68. Hallelujah. Psalm 68. Glory. Is everybody okay? You're learning anything today. Don't bite the bait. It's called the bait of Satan. <laughs> Don't bite the bait, man. Verse 18. Psalm 68. I'll start at 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai in the holy place. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men, even from the rebellious, that the Lord might dwell there. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loads us with what? Benefits. You want access to those benefits? Hallelujah. The God of our salvation. Our God is the God of salvation, and to God, the Lord belong escapes from death. But God will wound the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of one who still goes on in his trespasses. The Lord said, I will bring back from Basha. I will bring them back from the death of the sea that your foot may crush them in blood and the tongues of your dogs may have their portion from your enemies. He daily loads us with benefits to those who have not forsaken the right to access. You know, the word talks about again, again in the last days will be those with itching ears. People will become undercover trying to lead people out and take people out of position. We must be careful. Doctrines of demons, self-righteous, rebellious, and refusing to assemble. And I know sometimes people work and whatever, and they can't make it. I understand that. But, man, the more you and I assemble, the better it is, man. I mean, look at what happens when we assemble. I mean, as soon as you come in, all your brothers and sisters are here. It's like, wow, hello, you know. What are you doing? That's what my bird says. <laughs> my bird flies on my shoulder and he looks at me and goes, what are you doing? <laughs> Come out. <laughs> Again, we are in a time right now where we can't be misled. We must be led and stand strong in it. Remember, there's only unity in the spirit, not unity in the letter. Don't forget that. See, the enemy will try to convince me, oh, just me and Jesus, I can just stay home, me and, the, me and the Lord, me and the letter, yeah, that's it. No. There's no lone, lone, what is it, long rangers, lone rangers, whatever. People become dying stars then, amen? <laughs> Praise God. So we learn so we don't burn. Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory and honor and praise. We thank you. 
for your word. We thank you for sending Jesus to restore our rights. We thank you for salvation, and salvation is of the Lord. So Holy Spirit, continue to lead us and guide us to all truth. And seal your word that's been imparted in us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God.